Elle est accompagnée aussi. She's with Mikazon, Gabi, a fantastic boy. Gabi, we love you. We're proud of you. I'm going to give you your own mic. Bonsoir tout le monde. Bonsoir. Je voulais vous remercier pour toutes les moques de, euh, les moques de ces parties. C'est un coup dur pour ma famille et moi. Ils étaient toujours heureux. Ils souriaient, ils riaient. Ils faisaient toujours des blagues. <rire> euh. <coughs> Je voulais aussi dire que je, je, un de mes plans, c'est de faire une fondation au nom de Mika Ben. Je, je voudrais aussi que tous ces projets continuent, parce qu'il avait beaucoup de projets et beaucoup de projets. <rires> Je me souviens une fois, on était en Haïti ensemble, chez Mamiline, et il a demandé à la servante d'aller acheter du thym pour lui. Et puis la servante est revenue, et puis elle a dit, pas de thym. Et puis mon papa a dit, pas de thym, garde thym, thym. <rire> Je sais qu'il va nous manquer tous. Et je voulais remercier ma famille et tout le monde qui est ici. Merci d'être venu pour mon papa. Je vous aime. That is one good looking bunch of people. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for all the positive energy. Thank you for all the support and all the prayers. If there's one thing Mika and I believe then is positivity and prayers and that always helps. So I was supposed to write a speech, tell you about my husband, but uh, I think You guys already have an idea of who he was. I can tell you he was full of joy, full of laughter. I can tell you he was a hard worker. He's a dedicated musician, but you guys already knew that. So I, I thought I would give you guys a little inside scoop to how we met and we started dating. Um, He really wasn't my type at first. <laughs> so, <laughs> my cousin Kaolan had a birthday party and he was a, hi baby, and he was a performer there. And, you know, I don't really get starstruck, so it was whatever, you know, Mika Ben, J. Perry, A. Vilgal, okay, whatever. And at the end of the show, I went and hugged the person who hosted the party, which was Carl Christian. And I went and said bye or whatever. And he was in the middle of a conversation with Mika. So I was like, oh, excuse me, I'm trying to leave, you know. Thank you, it was a great party. And I said, oh, you did good. And I left. So per Mika's recollection, he was telling me um, the next day he was supposed to go play tennis with one of his bestest friends, Olivier, and my cousin, Frankie, which I didn't even know that they knew each other. So the time came for them to go play, and Mika was just stuck on his phone, just swiping through Instagram. He's like, I'm looking for this girl. We took a picture together. I know they're going to post it. How are they not going to post the picture with me? So. They're swiping, Frankie's getting impatient. So Mika kept the course and he just kept looking. 
But what he did not know is that my cousin is very um, present on social media. So the picture was bound to come out. So he finally found the picture. And he's like, yo, me <laughs> And so Frankie's like, bon bueno. And then so he turned the phone around and he's like, this girl, I need to know her name. And I need to know how I can reach her. And Frankie was like, what the? What about Adam? So Mika was like, yo, is that you? Is that your ex? Like, what's up? He's like, nah, man, that's, that's family. You, she's too good for you. It's not happening. So in the middle of the conversation, my name came up. So now he had a name. So he was like, okay. So then he called the person who hosted the party. And he said, hey, I'm going to send you a picture. Her name is Vanessa. I think it's Fafan. Do you know her? Do you have her number? So Carl was like, yeah, yeah, I can get you in touch with her. So Carl called me. Hey, I have somebody who wants your number. Can I give it to them? But he doesn't want me to tell you who it is. I was like, uh, hell no. And I was like, well, what's the big secret? Why does the person not want me to know who it is? Like, what is that about? That's absolutely not. And so in my mind, that was that. But I guess Mika just kept on harassing Call, and Call kept harassing me. So I got all kinds of bribes. Listen, I'm gonna take you to the Versace house. Let's go have dinner. We can talk about this. Can I give him your number though? Uh, no. So finally I gave in. He suggested we do a group chat on WhatsApp. And he said, you know, if anything, you can just block him if you don't like him. I was like, Christian, if that's going to get you off my back, do the group chat. So he did the group chat and he said, Vanessa, Mikael, Mikael, Vanessa. And I was like, well, hello. Mikael, who do you have a last name? And he was like, Benjamin. I was like, LOL. I was like, you could have just said so. My attitude would have been the same. So we briefly talked. I was not in a place in my life where I was looking for anything. So even though the conversations were short, hey, how's your day? It's good. What are you doing this week? You come in Miami? No, not really. You know, he never gave up. So he let a week go by and he'd hit me with a, hey, just thought of you. Are you in Miami? No. <laughs> Until one day he told me a joke and honestly, I don't even remember which joke it was. And I was like, oh, you're kind of funny. You can make me laugh. <laughs> and then from there we started talking every single day and that lasted a good seven to eight months and I never had to see him but he became part of my daily routine if I'm at work and I'm having a bad day and I don't talk to Mika it was a problem, not just for me, but for him. Because then I started to get so attached to him and I was like, wait a minute. I thought we were just trying to be friends. So what is that? So, right. <laughs> so I went down to Miami and we finally met. And um, he's like, oh, I have a performance. I want to take you with me. Would you do me the honor of coming with me. I said, okay. So we went, we had a good time. And uh, he said, oh, we have to fly to New York tomorrow, Tilio and I, so do you mind if I leave my stuff in your truck? <laughs> I was like, Sure. He's like, it's not that much. I said, yeah, no problem. You know, by that time I like him, you know, I'm feeling him. He's nice. He makes me laugh. And quite frankly, I couldn't go a whole day without talking to him. 
So um, they loaded up the truck. And I mean, they loaded up my truck. And a couple things was, the, I have a forerunner, guys. The truck was full. So I called him, I said, oh, it was more than a couple things, you know? What if I had to go do something with my truck? Like, you kinda, that's a little sumun, a little bit. I mean, and he was like, so of course he put it on Tilion's back. What well, Tilion said, I didn't need to travel with all that if you were gonna be here when we come back. So we thought it would be okay. Yeah, and then he said, oh, by the way, my shirt was too sweaty, so it was wet. Do you mind picking it up and doing the laundry? <laughs> so, <laughs> quickly I thought to myself, maybe I'm not that into him. <laughs> so I went back to my cousin's house, Frankie, and I said, you know this man had the nerves to ask me to do his laundry? I mean, we had one kiss. And Frankie said, listen, if you wanna do his laundry, that's fine, because I'm about to go to laundry, but I can tell you what, you are not washing his underwear with my clothes. <laughs> so when he came back, I did do the laundry. I did it, I did it. But when he came back, I couldn't wait to give him a piece of my mind. And I remember Tillion saying, ah, Mika, ça va manger un fouet, non? And on my way home, I called him and I told him, you know, I don't think this is gonna work out. First of all, you travel too much. I like the boring life. I wanna be home, have kids, go to the park, go to the movies, the simple life. You want to travel, you want to have your fans. You, I, don't think, um, I don't think that's the life for me. This man told me, let me tell you something. You're my last stop. And he said, you seem to have an on-off switch that I don't have but I'm gonna need you to figure it out and leave that switch on, on. So I stopped talking to him. I thought he was a bit arrogant. So I started dating this other guy. I did, I did. I started dating this other guy for a couple months and then we kissed and then I told the guy, I'm sorry, <laughs> I gotta go. I got in my car, on my way home, I called Mika. And he's like, um, hey, stranger. I was like, hey, um, I was calling you because I was trying to remember, you know that Kagimi song? He's like, stop it. <laughs> you missed me, I missed you too. <laughs> and I said, well, full disclosure and I started crying and I said I called you because I feel like I just cheated on you I was dating this guy and I kissed him and then we were about to go to second base and I was like what the hell and then he's like wait you kissed him I was like I think I just cheated on you he's like well okay so let's have a real conversation about what you want and when you figure out what that is, I will be here waiting for you. But I will tell you one thing. A union between me and you would be one that God would be proud of. That was the day we decided that we were gonna give our love a shot. And <laughs> we've been in love ever since.
He was a challenge to date. He was a little bit sheltered. He didn't know how to cook. He didn't know how to clean. He didn't know to pick up his plate when he's done eating to put it in the sink. And he got stuck at my house for six months during COVID. Yeah. Would you believe by the time we got married, I have not cooked in my house in over a year and a half. I taught Mika how to cook and he excelled so much at it, I don't even know how to make sauce poire. Mika can make du blanc sauce poire, poule, cordin. He can make saumon, and it's not just any kind of salmon, it's salmon avec sauce bechamel, avec pomme de terre. Mika knows how to clean. Mika does the laundry. He doesn't fold the clothes or put them in the right place, but he does the laundry. So he, he is the type of person who, when he really wanted something, he applied himself and he made it happen. So I'm gonna leave you guys with affirmations that we used to do every morning together. And I hope you guys can find him in those words. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, and I am conscious of the lessons he offers me. I'm the rock of faith for my family and all of those who follow me. My life is full of joy, love, and passion, and I'm excellent at maintaining enthusiasm in everything that I do. I am in the most prolific music producer in the entire world. As my creations are topping billboards, digital streamings, and radio charts, I bring a sense of serenity and lots of positivity to my family. Our common goals are aligned to fulfill our Heavenly Father's will and desires through our life's achievements. Today, I'm balancing my time between personal refinement, inspiring others, and creating memories with my family and friends. I expose the greatness in others and shine my light on it for others to see. I'm a wise steward of the incredible wealth I was given. Today I show gratitude for my healthy body by eating the most nutritious foods and demanding greater strength, speed, and stamina. I have a hunger for the truth, and I have the discipline to study from the greatest minds. I've been called to lead millions to spiritual, political, and financial freedom. I'm living for full success, and I'm willing to pay full price. <laughs> 